Hey guys, I'm back at the park down here and they got this place covered with roosters now and chickens and it's really getting kind of crazy down here. Um, they've got people living down here now um, with TVs in there. It's, it's really, they're fixing up the park out in the front, the facade, but they got dogs in here. It's, it's really getting bad. Um, I'm not sure what's going on or why. We got my old friend there. Um, the guy up front told me that the roosters were gone because it was quiet here one day when I was walking by, so I asked him. And there's more roosters than there was before, which is not good, <laughs> just to put it bluntly. But anyway, today I want to talk a little bit about um, what's going on in the United States and with China and the bases here in the Philippines a little bit. And the reason why I want to talk about that is because it seems to be like a buildup of what's going on. And that buildup is happening rapidly. We went from having zero bases to having five bases to having 10 bases to now having, I believe, 14 shared bases. These are shared bases. These are not U.S. bases. They probably will never be U.S. bases. And a lot of people say, well, gee, Steve, the... U.S. is coming back, they're getting bases. No, these are shared bases. I'm not even sure if we will have a PX. I'm not sure if we will be able to have U.S. veterans go on to those, be able to go on to those bases. It's highly unlikely that a shared base will let um, United States veterans go on there to use the PX. I'm not sure it'll happen. That has to be something that has to be talked about in these agreements. Now, Will it happen? Sure, it could. Um, it might actually be worth checking with the embassy or somebody to find out if you can go on these bases or maybe walk up to the gate of one of these bases and say, hey, listen, this is a shared base with the US military. Are US veterans allowed to go on and use the PX? You know, are we allowed to use some of the base services? Are we allowed to get haircuts there? Are we allowed to do stuff like that? I mean, it's kind of, in their best interest too, because there's people working from the Philippines in those places. I don't see that it'd be a problem um, as long as you have some sort of idea or what have you. It's a little bit windy, guys. You might hear a little bit of wind. I'm sorry about that. But the reason why I want to talk about this today is this, is that what's going on in the United States today is there's a balloon flying over the US and also in South America, another one in South America. It's from China. China admitted it's theirs. They say it's some kind of weather balloon or something like that, I guess, or observation balloon. It's not a military balloon, but I'm sure it is a military balloon. Although most of that stuff they can do from satellites. And this balloon is up to something. And it's just before we were supposed to have some talks or whatever, and the United States stepped back from the talks and says, hey, Looks like we're not gonna have the talks now, okay? I think the, that China is really pushing the world's buttons to test to see what they can get away with because they're on the verge of doing something. And if we keep doing nothing, they're guessing that we're just gonna do nothing when, when they go into like Taiwan or something like that, or possibly even the Philippines, who knows? Um, the fact that this is going on tells me that the United States right now is exceptionally weak. And we're looking weaker by not shooting down that damn balloon. They say it's because of the civilians, that it could land on civilians. But the middle part of the country when it flew over is only 1% of the population, US population in the, in the Midwest, actually in the middle of the country is only like 1% of the population lives down that strip, goes from the top to the bottom, but 1% of the US population lives in that area. You know, with that said, why wouldn't you shoot it down in that area? The chances of it hitting somebody or hitting a house or a car, are very, very slim during that, that, that time. You know, you just shoot it down, boom. Plenty of places over the Dakotas, they could have shot it down, not have an issue, let's face it. But they didn't do it. But anyway, my take on it is this. With us building up our military forces over here, and I'm not saying bases because they're not our bases again, but we are allowed to build 
set up things and this is only temporary until this gets resolved I guess so with that said I don't think we're gonna build anything there like PX's or are we gonna let you know US veterans onto those bases nor do I think actually that we will get any um, VA medical extra VA medical care on these bases or what have you I would like to see that I'd love to see some um, military hospitals here but with and is there there is a possibility they could build one they could say you know what we're gonna build a, um, a VA hospital here we're gonna do it you know we're gonna we're gonna build a VA hospital in a military hospital here shared and we will use that to help our veterans number one and also help our our soldiers or whatever that are sick or whatever because they do need to have a hospital over here for these people it can't just be a clinic or whatever unless they're gonna send them to Guam or something and for serious things they're gonna need a hospital if they got 14 bases that we're using and it sounds like they're gonna ship in a ton of military um, backup support people military people like Marines and army or sailors or whatever you know the usual run of the gamut for for the military you know we, we need to have that's all that in here right now it's kind of a safety measure for us too I like having the US military in the Philippines it makes me feel safer I'm sure it does with many um, Filipinos too a lot of Filipinos don't like it there was people protesting this actually and I'm not trying to get involved in politics here but let's face it it is a good thing that we have US military back in the Philippines you know I mean I was in the Navy back in the 1980s I was on a submarine. I never, I never came, came to the Philippines. I was an East Coast sailor. I, I was out of Charleston, South Carolina. And, um, you know, I got to talk to a lot of people that served over here during that time. And there's a lot of history and stuff. And I see the guys come over here, here their eyes light up as soon as they land here. People have a, that served in the military have a love for the Philippines here because of their childhood memories and their, their, in their teens and their, their late teens and their tw 20s and even into their 30s for some guys that pulled in here and some people, you know, they retired over here or what have you and there's something to be said for having military here. I'd love to be able to see, you know, soldiers and sailors and Marines walking around in the Philippines again. We haven't seen that in years. You know, even with the military that's here now, most of them have to stay on base, I think. And it's probably for good measure because of some of the things that happened that have happened in the past you know could that happen again they had rapes and killings and stuff like that in a couple of countries and it was only like one and that's gonna happen anywhere with the amount of people that you have the amount of you know murder and stuff and, and crimes happen in the military just like it does outside of the military unfortunately and when it happens it's a black eye on the US and it really hurts us for many years sometimes decades and I think that's part of the problem here. And hopefully the sailors that we're getting over here are better than some of the sailors that we heard had to, during the tail end of that, because we had some serious issues with American soldiers and sailors here for a while. And the same in Japan. In Japan, they did serious, serious damage up there with some of the things that happened there. There was rapes, murders, things like that, that had happened. If that happens again here in the Philippines, we'll never be able to come back here. It'll hurt us forever. So let's hope that that doesn't happen. But anyway, guys, I want to talk a little bit about that and about that balloon and about the bases. A lot of guys have this hope that Subic's coming back. It might, but it won't be our base. It'll be a shared base. God bless, guys. Take care.